For at TV, the world is thinking. What's important for this talk, however, is that the effects that we're talking about now are in adults. When we start to talk about early development, whether we're talking about amphibians or humans, the effects are much greater. What is a little bit of poison in an adult is a great amount of poison in a developing infant or even in a developing fetus. What's interesting now is there's discussions that women who breastfeed might have lower risk of breast cancer. And, and some of the discussions are that those lower risks might be because she's, women who are breastfeeding are mobilizing those toxins from the breast by excreting it into the milk. But those toxins then, which are in the milk, are going into the developing infant. And the difficulty that we're faced with now, as, as Gina alluded to, is it's one thing to show an acute exposure and a problem, but much more difficult in humans to show that if I get breast cancer or prostate cancer at 50, that it's related to something that I was exposed to from my mother's milk, or it's related to something that I was exposed to in the uterus that came across the placenta. What's been very helpful in, this, in these areas are that we have rodent studies. We have rat studies, which they're mammals like us. They breastfeed like us. Um, they carry their babies like us. And we're now seeing that, for example, atrazine exposure in rats leads to prostate cancer in the females when they're nursing and when they're pregnant, so it crosses a generation. We're seeing that atrazine causes hormone imbalances that lead to breast development problems in the daughters of rats that are exposed. And then those rats even have problems feeding their daughters because their breasts don't develop properly. So we're seeing in rats that we get problems in the grandchildren of exposed rats two generations down. So the affected rat who has poor neural development and poor growth was never exposed to atrazine, his or herself, his or her grandmother was. And what you'll often hear from the industry is, well, rats aren't people. I even saw this on a AB, uh, Channel 7 just ran a news story and there was a guy at Stanford saying, well, mice aren't men. But we've seen this already. We have a whole history, DES, which we now know DES causes vaginal cancers in the daughters of women who took it when they were pregnant. We know that DES, or diastole stilbestrol, causes uterine malformations in humans when the mothers were exposed, but we'd already shown that in rats. You can expose a rat in one, two, three generations down, you still see effects of DES. We already knew that in DDT, it could cross the placenta and affect, the, and affect developing rats. And now in 2006, finally we have a study showing that women who are exposed to DDT before the age of 14, are more likely to develop breast cancer when they're 50 or 60 years old. So we already know that these rat models, and of course the other irony is that the com these companies use rat models when they're trying to get the chemicals on the market. But then when you find something negative, they argue, oh, it's just rats, it's, it's just mice, it's not rel relative to humans. So my concern is raised for environmental health, because now we're seeing a global decline in amphibians, and I firmly believe that pesticides are playing a role in that decline. Not the sole reason, but playing a role. And I firmly believe that what we're seeing in amphibians and what we can model in laboratory rodents is a warning about public health issues. Because many of the developmental processes, many of the hormones are the same. And in particular, I think we need to be concerned about, you know, I've often said with the atrazine issue that we need to take a stand, write to the EPA, write to Congress, and, 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 and be proactive, not because of us. Essentially, we've already been exposed. And then when you're given the half-life of many of these chemicals, our children have already been exposed, and our grandchildren will likely be exposed. So the fight we're fighting now is really, if you look at what we're learning from rats, the fight we're fighting now is really for our grandchildren's grandchildren.